This is Twit. Paul Therott, let's talk Windows and Windows 11 specifically and Windows 11 AI even more specifically. What's yeah, up? so I, as I was writing this part of the notes, I was like, we talked about this last week. I kept checking the date. I was kind of confused by this, but I realized it was probably because they had announced some of this stuff through the Insider program ahead of time, right? And so some of the features that Microsoft kind of formally went out to the world with last week on Thursday were things like you and I and the people listening or watching this probably are like, oh, I've already heard of this stuff. I don't quite get it. But they had kind of a big virtual event on Thursday, uh, they, the Windows slash Copilot teams, about new AI features coming to Windows 11, but also a broader initiative to turn, oh, you're going to love these terms, guys, uh, <laughs> Windows into an agenic OS and or oh an AI native OS. All right. Now you're just making stuff up. Yep. Yep. And I'm so sorry that those words just came out of my mouth. But um, they also very explicitly are seeking to redefine the term AI PC, which is something that Intel came up with, I, possibly in partnership with Microsoft, actually, probably two years ago. Um, for the Meteor Lake cl uh, generation of Intel Core Ultra PCs, the first gen. Right. Because the they ones had, they only made one of, those ones? Uh, yes. <laughs> and then they did it again with Lunar Lake. But yes. <laughs> and I, 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 yeah, two one off designs. But uh, you know, they, I think they figured it out now. I, the one looks good. I mean, we'll see. But um, yeah. And then, of course, Microsoft six months later came out with Copilot Plus PC. And those were mm -hmm. for PCs that had a, a MPU capable of 40 or more tops. Right. And as we've discussed. And, and included ARM, obviously. Yes, right. Out of the gate, it was only ARM, actually. And then eventually, you know, Intel and ARM, uh, AMD with their subsequent chipsets. So it's fair to say this stuff hasn't gone over great, <laughs> you know. Well, and, I would also you remind me that Microsoft had to walk the Intel guys out of build. Yes. Yeah, they were going to crash it. Yeah. Not a bit. It was uh, well. It was the event, the Copilot Plus PC. The event. Copilot Plus PC event. Yeah, it, they it, I, literally. I sh they uh, escorted them off the Microsoft security. Escorted them off campus. They tried to crash it. Wow. You can't yep. be here. It's like, listen, we get that your entire shtick is beating up on the rest of the industry, but you're gonna have to take today off because that's not <laughs> happening right now. I'm, I'm I'm struggling with you painting Microsoft as the good guys here, but okay. I'm not sure I said that, but in this one case, yeah, it's like the, uh, yeah, I don't know. How to, I'm not sure what the comparison is here. What, you know, one bad actor protected me from another bad actor, I guess, for two seconds. They're the good guy. But I, I bring that all up because, you know, you're right. Intel had their AI PC concepts, mm -hmm. which were obviously focused on their chips. Yep. And then Microsoft Copilot Plus PC was initially just ARM, but is now an inclusive, yeah, it was, friendly, it was known everybody to, can play. It was always going to be for everybody, but in the beginning it was, they had that whatever, six months, maybe not even yeah. really, but um, yeah, Intel didn't like that. And Intel, you know, you know, when you're a bully, you, you, it's hard. It's like riding a bike, you know, you don't, <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard to stop doing the thing that always worked in the past, you know, whatever. But um, yeah, so. Look, Microsoft is not criticizing Copilot plus PC. Uh, Microsoft is also not addressing the fact that no major use case for an on-device MPU has ever emerged uh, that would benefit some large population of people. There's obviously a million little features. Um, mm -hmm. But but in discussing this new AI, new <laughs> AI PC concept, this notion that Windows 11 or, or maybe some future Windows version will be infused with AI in and out, you know, Yusuf Mehdi, uh, who's been around honestly longer than I have uh, in some yeah, ways, but, um, long time. Yeah. I mean, I first met him in 98 at the windows NT 5.0 reviewers workshop to put that one in perspective, but he had been there for several years by that point. Um, also it doesn't appear to be aging, which is vaguely irritating. Um, <laughs> he, uh, he's unfortunately multiple times, both in this presentation they gave and then in interviews and things has, uh, described this effort as Microsoft rewriting Windows from the ground up, you know, that should always cause a little bit of like, oh, I don't think that's what's happening. Yeah, pretty um, sure. That seems very unlikely. Yeah, I, I wish I would walk away from that kind of language. But anyway, uh, but they are their 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 point, so to speak, is Windows is transitioning into this new era and it's going to be an agentic OS, meaning there'll be agents in Windows 
um, that you can control. Also, I'm sure, in, you know, Microsoft 365, et cetera. But, you know, as a major um, platform maker, they're, you know, they're doing this thing. I mean, to me, this makes sense, right? Um, they, I arguably, they have more right to define the AI PC than just about anybody else on the planet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And for the PC to keep moving forward, as it has, by the way, even as the world has kind of moved to mobile and, you know, we all spend more time on these devices and everyone knows Ma that Mac's story. taking a bigger share, but still. Yeah. But, but, you know, Windows, for Windows, you know, when, um, Bill Gates once described, uh, you know, the incredible versatility of the PC, how it's been able to kind of come along with all these tech shifts. And this is one, honestly, I feel like it could successfully do. The, the, the cloud thing didn't make a lot of sense with Windows. All you had were these minor entry points with like OneDrive and files on demand and um, obviously the Office apps may be running up in the cloud or whatever. But uh, as far as Windows itself, like the cloud stuff, like, I mean, obviously they put Windows in the cloud too, right? Microsoft or Windows 365, I guess. But as far as the day-to-day -day mm, impact, OneDrive. it was like, eh, you know. Um, this though... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this makes sense to me, right? Because this is this is as much a client as it is a, a backend service. Yeah, exactly. And uh, well, let me I'll, well, let me. I'll jump ahead a little bit here. Tied to this is this notion of um, what I think I've described as like programmable apps. I'm still looking for the right term here, but it, it's this notion. If you accept that, like Windows as a service is Microsoft's attempt. By the way, pretty successful now to turn windows into an online service in the sense that that's how it gets serviced, which is continually. Yeah. Um, most people would probably say it was a little too successful, kind of irritating. Um, apps are adapting to, um, I, again, I'm searching for terms. I, I don't think the industry has come to the right terms. This stuff, we're going to say publish individual features so that they can be consumed by services, which will include AI agents, right? Right. And the idea there is that it's, you know, it's like creating a, a flow chart of, you know, we, we're trying to get this task done. What are, what are the features that we need that might be an app? Some of them will be in online services. And then we're going to orchestrate that all together into a single workflow that gets whatever that thing is done. Right. And I talked about how, you know, the men, the right click menus in um, Windows are turning into these unbelievable, <laughs> like long lists of things with all these sub menus. You know, we're going to have, you know, we have open with, we have share with, we have AI actions are coming soon. If you don't already see that, we have individual apps like photos and OneDrive that have their own side menus, you know, mm -hmm. um, or uh, sub menus. It's, you know, this is, this is happening, right? And so this is, uh, I wrote in editorial last week. I don't remember if it was before when it's weekly or after, but. Um, saying that, you know, AI is the end of apps. And, you know, to my literal audience, um, that was a little bit problematic. But the mm. the point, if you think about what's the natural end game for a web browser, we, we go to, we're turning these things into agentic browsers that are going to do tasks on your behalf, just like their operating system here. So people don't read already. Browsing is going to effectively go away. Not literally everybody, but I mean, you know, as the primary use case, do we even need the browser anymore? I mean, we're just going to be talking to something and it yeah. will go do this on the back end, right? I, I found it easier to digest if you just look at uh, like an ERP system. Like a, a guy working in accounts receivable uses a piece of software that's just a wrapper over a database. Yeah. And and if you had the database data properly marked up with the right security rules and so mm -hmm. forth, why couldn't a prompt give the every answer that that AR app could possibly give? Who owes us money? Who should I call first? What's their information? Like yeah. that yeah. can be promptified. It's uh, one of the unique things about this AI stuff right now is that because these companies are racing to get the stuff out in the world without mm -hmm. being regulated and, and without being stopped in any way, they're agreeing with each other, right? They, they're agreeing on standards, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, there's MCP, uh, the MCP being, stuff. Exactly, yeah. right? And so these capabilities that we're seeing in apps in Windows now, and you'll see them in app, you actually you do, of course, like Magic Q on the Pixel is it orchestrating individual apps to do things for you proactively, right? Same theory. Uh, the apps are becoming what I, again, I call it, I'm, I'm lacking for language here, but these apps are becoming programmatic. It's, it, does, it doesn't, I know I need a better term, yeah. but you know, much like the Olay, Com, whatever interfaces of the 1990s, they have public interfaces. And those public interfaces can be used by AI agents and other apps and services too, of course. Like Windows does that. That's yeah. where those menus come from. Maybe it's interoperable. 
Yeah, inter- yeah. Interoperable I mean, like between... interface is a good word. Like I like that yeah. one. I remember the little like flower, like the circle on the stick icon to <laughs> you know that would uh, in, you know visually indicate the uh, the public and I guess private interfaces. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I keep looking. I, I every time Anthropic, OpenAI, Microsoft, Google announces something, I always look. I'm like, oh, is, are they going to say something where it's like this is it? You know, someone will come up with a better term. Um, all right, so I've jumped ahead a little bit. So let me just talk briefly about what they announced, right? Which was mm-hmm. a the vision that Windows will be agentic, and they're saying, "Look, Ignite's coming in November. We are going to talk more about this." The stuff they talked about last week was essentially and probably entirely consumer features, but it is coming to business, and that was the promise at the end. They're like, "Look, we have a lot more to say about this stuff." And as that comes together, I think we're you know we'll learn a lot more, and maybe some timing stuff, whatever. But It'll be interesting so, to see how this fits against M365 because right now, when you think about AI for business, you think M365 Copilot. So yeah, so how does the OS play right. with that? Yep, um, I, I mean I can only speculate, but if we go back in time to the beginning, right? And so it's spring 2020, the beginning. I'm sorry of this era, right? The beginning, every the 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 bad times or whatever whatever you want to think of. <laughs> um, you know the dark ages that we're living in. So yeah. in February March 2023. Yeah, you know, Microsoft over a period of time said we're going to do something called Microsoft 365 Copilot, right. and then I think it was at Build that year they said we're going to put Copilot in Windows, and uh, the plan then remember was 23H2, but they rushed it out early so everyone would be kind of forced to get it. Of course, <laughs> there's some construction thing happening right now. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, sorry if you could hear that, um, and sorry if you couldn't because I just paused for two seconds there. Um, so that stuff happened, and in the conversation at that time was, well, these are the two places where it makes sense for Microsoft to add AI. Windows, as that orchestrator, like uh, Stevie Batiste described it, will integrate mm-hmm. these capabilities at an OS, OS level. Makes sense. And you can see these programmable apps, again, for lack of a better term, as part of the steps to get to this thing, right? That that has to happen. It's You can't just screen scrape and move a fake you know, mouse cursor around a web browser and click on things like it, it has to be programmatic or I yeah. for lack of a better term. So, you know, that made sense then. Now, what we've seen since then is Microsoft added uh, Copilot to those Microsoft 365 apps as a sidebar. They've integrated it further. You can right click and do things and select words and do things and all that kind of stuff. It's in, they're kind of in the apps, right? We've seen what they've done in Windows. Some of it's successful, some not. Some tied to Copilot plus PCs, right? Which is a problem um, because it, that limits its availability to everybody. And so uh, part of this is a recasting of what it means to be an AI PC specifically because we can't just limit it to Copilot plus PCs. We have to make these, mm-hmm. for this to make any sense, it has to be available to everybody, right? And yep. that's the, so that's what they're talking about. And that seems correct to me. But as far G-P-U. as like, how does this integrate G-P-U. with- GPU. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, there's there's always going to be this confusing matrix of features, some of which are free with limits, some of which are just free. Some are cloud, some are local, some require a subscription. If you're not the subscription holder, you can't. If there's no, not even an option for you, you can pay for these new subscriptions like Microsoft 365 Premium. On the business side, obviously Microsoft 365 Copilot. Um, if you're a business, you could roll this out to some users and not others, and et cetera, et cetera. But if you're the best case scenario for Microsoft, or and I would say for a user as well, if you're in the Microsoft space, is you're running Microsoft 365 on top of Windows. And so, I, you know, will Word and Excel and PowerPoint expose their features through AI actions? Probably, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, and so I say probably only because there's always like an asterisk because is this a paid feature? Do you have to have a 365 subscription? Does it show up if you don't? Does it, you know, do they just not do it because they only want to put that through the subscription and you do those in the app? I don't, you know, I can't say right now. They didn't talk about that, but that might be a good thing for Ignite, right? If they're, if they're going in that direction. Mm-hmm. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this little highlight from a much better show <laughs> and longer too called Windows Weekly. The whole link to the show is right below me. And, of course, we stream live right here every Wednesday. You can watch us do our thing or download it here or in your favorite podcast player. Uh, Best thing to do, what do they say? Uh, Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.